Today, we're gonna to take a look at how to straighten out the lines on your GoPro footage using DaVinci Resolve, which is free software that you can use on a Mac or Windows computer. If you haven't got it already, head over to the Blackmagic Design website and download your copy. It's absolutely free. Now, if you upgrade to the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, you unlock a number of advanced video editing features. And one of those is the ability to automatically straighten out the lines on your video footage for when you have lens distortion. And as I mentioned, it's very noticeable on GoPro Hero footage. So that would be ideal, but some of you may not have the budget to spend the $300 on the upgrade. In which case, I'm gonna show you how to do it using the free version of DaVinci Resolve from within the Fusion tab by applying the lens distort filter. There's just a few parameters we need to adjust and the end result will be pretty much the same as using the auto filter in the paid version. So without any further delay, Let's go ahead and take a look at how to straighten out that footage. Let's get started. So I've opened up DaVinci Resolve and I've dragged two video clips directly onto the timeline from my media pool. These are 4K 60 frames per second video files from my GoPro. And as you can see, as I scrub along the timeline, there's a lot of curvature present in the footage due to that wide angle lens. So what we're looking for here is some straight lines in a building so that we can get a visual sense of how curved the footage actually is. So I'm going to stop on this interior scene shot in the Block Arcade on Collins Street, Melbourne, which has a very clear curvature on the left hand and right hand sides of the footage. So in order to straighten out those lines, let's jump into the Fusion tab, which is the fourth icon on the bottom menu. So the layout changes a little bit from the timeline view mode, where we have our preview window in the top section of the screen. We have our effects on the left and we have our nodes section at the base of the screen. We have the basic node structure, which is comprised of media in and media out. And our aim is to add the lens distort effect in between the media in and media out. So the first thing we're going to do is to look for the lens distort tool. You can drag down until you find the lens distort effect or use the search icon and type in lens and the lens distort effect will be available. In order to apply the lens distort effect, simply drag it onto the line in between the media in and media out nodes. If you happen to drag it onto the nodes section by mistake, and you wanna get it onto the line so that it's in between the two nodes, simply shift drag it directly onto the line. So the end result is that you have the effect in between the two nodes. Now, if you'd like to see the before and after as you're applying the edits, tap on the first dot on the media in node, and that will activate the preview window on the left-hand side of the media out window so that you can see the before and after as you're editing. So now that I've done that, I'm ready to start adjusting the lens distort parameters. And that can be done in the inspector window on the right hand side under the lens distort effect that we've just added. There are a range of camera presets available for certain cameras in the camera settings, but the GoPro isn't one of them. So we're going to use the manual lens distortion model in order to correct our footage. So in order to apply these effects, simply click on the lens distortion arrow and you'll get a drop down of available options. There's different models that you can use to apply distortion to. We'll use the standard 3D classic model for our distortion and we'll now start to adjust some of the parameters. The easiest way to remove distortion is to use the first slider called distortion. If you move it left, it exaggerates the distortion in the lens and as you move it right, it starts to rectify the curvature and straighten out the lines automatically for you. The only problem with using the distortion filter is that you lose some of the footage on the left and the right because it's zooming in in order to accommodate for those changes you've made. So the next thing you need to do is apply some anamorphic squeeze in order to bring back some of that content on the left hand and right hand side of the frame. So now I'm going to slide the anamorphic squeeze slider to the right hand side as well. And you'll see some of that footage that was lost in the foreground is starting to return to the frame. And now I'm going to use the quadric distortion just to tidy it up a little further. And if you look to the left where the footage hasn't had any effects applied, 
you can clearly see the difference between the two. And just by sight, you can use your judgment to adjust the sliders until you have perfect straight lines with as much of the foreground in the frame as possible. Now there is another way of adjusting the lines without using the distortion feature, which tends to crop out a lot of that footage. And that is by going directly to the curvature X and curvature Y parameters, moving the sliders left and right until those lines straighten out, using the quadric distortion for further straightening, and then using the distortion filter at the top just to remove any final amounts of distortion that might be noticeable in the footage. And that results in a similar level of straightening to the previous method, but I find it helps retain some of that footage in the foreground that was lost using the distortion model that I described previously. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. Find the one that works best with your footage. And once you're happy with what you're seeing, you can return to the timeline and preview it to see what it looks like. And if you really wanna double check that all those lines are being straightened throughout your whole footage, you can go to different points in your timeline that you'd like to test, come back to the Fusion tab, readjust, and go back as necessary until you're sure the straightening is effective on all of your footage. If you have multiple clips, you'll need to go back into that clip and reapply the footage. If you are applying this effect to multiple clips, you can go back into the Fusion tab of your first clip, copy and paste that node into the second clip in the Fusion tab. When it comes to rendering this out, click on the final render icon on the base of the screen and render it out to the desired resolution. Keep in mind, this might be a very long render as the lens distort feature within the Fusion effects is a very processor intensive task. If you're doing lots of this type of work and you need a much faster workflow, as I mentioned earlier, there would be a benefit in upgrading to the DaVinci Resolve Studio Edition, which includes the automated filter, which you can apply by clicking on the lens correction effect in the inspector window of your footage directly in the timeline. This negates the need of having to go into Fusion. It's much more automated and easier to use as it uses an algorithm in order to apply the correct settings. And the other benefit is that it is super fast when it comes to rendering out the footage. Didn't seem to add any additional time to my project render. So certainly if you have the budget of around $300 for the upgrade, highly recommended. If you don't and you're happy using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, you can simply use the lens distort feature in the Fusion tab that I've demonstrated today. Thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you're notified of up and coming video releases. And by all means, if you have any questions about what you've seen today, feel free to put them in the comments box below. See you on the next one, bye for now.